between a descender and a decelerator combining the two technologies to create a stunt that has never been seen before. A five-story high fall to the ground. What this stunt is, is taking high falls to the next level. We accomplished a 53-foot high fall uh, right to the ground by combining two technologies. We took the descender, which is a classic piece of stunt technology, and the decelerator and combined the two technologies and created a hybrid stunt, which allowed us to, which I believe we can go to virtually any height and do a high fall straight to the ground. Um, how we accomplished this is we spent a couple of days testing in the stunt lab, which allowed us to work out a lot of the pick points on the harnesses, uh, testing out some of the theories, training the people, uh, without having to have any money come out of the production company's pocket because we uh, knew we were going to do this stunt and we wanted to work out the particulars of the stunt uh, before we actually got to the set. Three, two, one, action. Now a lot of people don't understand exactly how uh, a descender or a decelerator works. How a descender works is it's a, it's a cable spool that works on a gear reduction system uh, with friction, which is uh, off of the fans. You can take this particular piece of equipment, this descender, and you can take someone to virtually any height, let them go at a full speed fall, step away and never touch the brakes. They can hit the ground and run away. The, all of the, the uh, a descender is designed to run itself and run it uh, uh, to where you literally can take someone right to the ground and it's the mechanical advantage of the machine that slows the person down. If you're having to rely on the brakes, whoever set the descender up is, is not sending up the descender properly because the descender will run itself. Um, on a stunt like this, at the very tail end, because we're coming up to a quarter, an inch, quarter of an inch of the camera, you will use the brakes slightly at the end, but everything is in the rehearsal and everything is in the mechanical advantage of the machine. Uh, you do not need to rely on the brakes. If you're relying on the brakes, the descender is uh, set up improperly. And if, it, if we hadn't have had this opportunity to pre-plan, to pre-test, and then on the day of the stunt we did 17 rehearsals, you can't push the envelope on huge stunts like this without the opportunity to do rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal because the only way to accomplish something that's never been done before is you have to do it in, 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 in linear steps, is you keep pushing just a little, a little bit at a time and I ask the person that's doing the fall can I go faster? Are you comfortable with this? And if they say yes, I'll take them slightly faster. And if I'm comfortable with it, I'll go a little faster. And, if, and at any point through the entire process, if uh, the, I'm not comfortable with the system or the person doing the stunt is not comfortable with what they're having to perform, we have to stop at that point. And that's what was so remarkable about this stunt is we had rehearsal after rehearsal uh, here at the stunt lab and then we had 17 rehearsals on the actual set because we had the time to work it out, uh, which we normally don't have the luxury to do that. And this particular show we did, and that's why we uh, accomplished a stunt that had never been done before. How we did our testing is we started with one sandbag, got everything worked out, then we went with another sandbag, another sandbag, till we were actually to the weight of the stunt girl. Then we, um, I had the stunt girl uh, operate the machine with her weight on it, just doing a normal drop, a descender drop, and 
so that she understood exactly how the system worked and how the system would run itself. And this video documents pretty much the, the pre-planning, uh, the pre-rehearsing the two days before, and then the actual setup on the job. But we had a, a phenomenal crew that, that came and uh, uh, helped us. And uh, you can't do stunts that have never been done before unless uh, you, you completely understand the physics of everything that's involved. And I've been studying these types of machines and improving them and coming up with new designs for over 20 years. And so I brought the stunt girl up to the machine and actually had her operate it once so she understood exactly what I was doing on my end. And we started her very slow and then we just go slightly faster and slightly faster and slightly faster, slightly deeper, slightly faster. And every time I'd say, um, are you comfortable with what we, we're doing? And she'd say yes. And so we started with just straight drops because then we weren't working with any pendulums or any inertia. Uh, the straight drop is a traditional descender drop. Uh, then we combined uh, a slack line effect, which was the stepping off of the ledge, and we did that in baby steps also, and that's where we got the combinations of the two stunts. Actually, the stunt was with a slack decelerator line that fell into a descending system, uh, a very highly uh, advanced descending system, uh, which I call my Mark III descender. So we actually combined decelerator technology and descender technology which literally we can take someone from any height have them hit the ground and, and run away or bring them straight to their face like what you saw in the stunt lab where we took tree uh, from a, a virtually like a 14 foot fall straight to the concrete and uh, then for the shot we went 53 feet right to the camera right to the ground and uh, what's remarkable about this is just the having the opportunity to have the script have the, uh, the talent and the stunt girl, the rigging crew, uh, the location, and the time to make it all happen because you normally don't have that luxury, especially on these little tiny budgets because this was on the new SEG contract, um, which are the micro contracts. And it, it's just really exciting to me that we could uh, do stunts on this tiny little budget that, they, that the, the rest of uh, the community is not even doing the gigantic shows with uh, $100 million budgets. So it was really exciting for us. And the, uh, at the last minute, we originally were going to have her jump out on fire, so we did some fire training at the stunt lab as well because the stunt girl had never done any uh, fire burns before. So we were going to do this fall on fire, and at the last minute, the director decided to only have fire coming out the windows on the other side of her because it's supposedly her jumping out of a burning building. Um, it actually made our job easier, and we could concentrate on the fall more when she only had to come down and cover the camera lens. But coming down to the camera lens itself was very, very, very technical because they wanted to have her face come directly into the lens full speed and then they were going to CGI in the actress's face so it should be a very dynamic shot. A speed! C speed! Action! Three, two, one! Of a, of a digital shot in as much as the fall is real, 100% real, 100% full speed, but, but as she comes close to camera, they're going to put the actress's face on the stunt girl so it'll look like the actress coming straight into the camera. We really ripped her in there that time, but we can go faster yet if we have to. Actually, we didn't go as fast as we could have gone in this fall. I kept taking her faster and deeper and faster and deeper. And everybody... Hey, Jeff. I wanted to thank Paramount Pictures for giving us the opportunity to do this stunt. I know I've known for quite some time we've been able to do a high fall from virtually any height right to the ground and this is the first uh, opportunity we've had to really uh, work out uh, the theory that it could be done and without good scripts and without studios willing to do action scripts we honestly can't test out these new theories and do stunts that have never been done before.